So, how do we know what we know? How do we make sense of the information we receive? How do we interpret facts and data and turn them into our version of reality? How we perceive and understand is an important element in marketing theory. Everything we do, every decision we make, every action we take, every initiative we start is based on what we know or what we believe to be true. Market research, data analysis, customer feedback, intuition, anecdote, experience, all combine to construct our reality that subsequently drives our behavior. So what if there was no such thing as reality? Well, we could easily disappear down a philosophical rabbit hole in searching for the nature of reality. So let's make it easier on ourselves. Let's just think in terms of knowledge. What is it we know? What are the facts? At a fundamental level, everything we know arrives via our senses. Traditionally, we think of five primary senses like sight, hearing, taste, smell, and touch. But in reality, we have closer to 30 senses, including things like balance, temperature, pain, hunger, and so on. And we rely on our senses to give us a sort of first-hand account to confirm or verify. Say you're in a restaurant and a waiter brings you a meal and says, be careful, the plate's very hot. Do you know if he's telling the truth? I mean, why would he lie about something like that? To be sure though, you do something that we've all done and you touch the plate and then you go, wow, that was hot. And now you know the waiter was telling the truth. So can you rely on your senses? Well, no is the short answer. Your senses can and often do mislead you. And this is important because if you can't rely on your primary inputs, which provide the raw materials for comprehension, then you have to question everything, which is a good habit to get into. Take a look at the small inner squares to my left and right. The one on your left seems a little darker, even though both small squares are the same color. Simply altering the background has a subtle effect. The context changes our perception. Think of this as a metaphor, the background representing your existing beliefs and opinions. Everything you see against this background will be affected by it and will differ from somebody else who views the same thing, but with a different background, with their background. Now take a look at this image and would you say square A is darker than square B? Obvious, right? Pretty straightforward but they are in fact the same color. That's right, they are exactly the same color. Sometimes the effect isn't so subtle. It can be the difference between black and white. We have to learn to see past the extraneous details and noise before we can see the truth. And it isn't only our visual senses that get fooled. There is an audio illusion called the shepherd tone where multiple sine waves continuously rise in pitch and at set intervals each one of them drops down an octave only our brains don't notice so even though this pitch is effectively stuck in a loop and going nowhere we hear it as if it's rising forever which is pretty cool okay so what why should marketing theory care about sensory illusions well a lot of what we do depends on our interpretation of data and accepted truths. If we accept the principle that even that which seems obvious may be misleading, then we will be better at verifying, checking and authenticating, being a little bit more skeptical. When all your competitors are pursuing similar courses of action based on generally accepted truths or reality, then there's huge potential in being the one who doesn't take things at face value and instead says, how do we know? And looks for confirmation. Now, it's not exactly a revelation that our senses can be fooled. What is potentially more interesting is how our senses work together to create meaning. There seems to be fundamental universal rules that connect our senses. There is a condition called synesthesia, which is the involuntary automatic pairing of two different senses. If you have a form of synesthesia, you might associate precise colors with specific words or letters or experience tastes when you hear certain sounds. Synesthesia is an extreme form of 
cross-modality, which is normal to some extent. For example, taste and smell are very cross-modal, very connected for most of us. But for a person with synesthesia, the effect is magnified and it may connect different pairs of senses. Now, synesthesia only occurs in around 4% of the population, but some connection between our senses occurs in all of us. Take a look at these two shapes. If I told you one was called Booba and the other is called Kiki, do you know which is which? Yes, you do. It's obvious that the cloud-like shape is Booba and the star-like shape is Kiki, but why? Why do 95% of people make the same judgment? I mean, these are made up words, but it's obvious which is Booba and which is Kiki. And it isn't just shapes this work with, milk chocolate versus dark chocolate, which tastes Booba and which tastes Kiki. Still water doesn't taste different from sparkling water, it just feels different on the tongue, but which feels Booba and which feels Kiki? Smell of leather and the smell of lemons? Leather is Booba and lemons are Kiki. Bass drum and cymbal? Definitely Booba. And that's so Kiki. Turns out words have shapes, sounds have taste, smells have colours, and it affects all of us, not just the 4% with synesthesia. If you present the same wine for tasting with different fonts and in different glasses, expert tasters will reliably report the one presented with the rounder font in the curvier glass as tasting smoother. A booba font with a booba glass creating a booba taste. Designers understand booba and kiki and how our senses work together to create an overall perception. It's why font choice and colour, product design and packaging, branding and communications are all important and need to integrate to combine and create harmony and consistency. And this interconnection between senses is not just some fun piece of trivia. It's essential for humans to make sense of our complex world. For example, you're on a plane and you've just taken off and you're in the climb and you see the front of the plane is higher than the back. It slopes up. Makes sense, right? Only you can't see that. Your eyes cannot see the front of the plane higher than the back, even though it is. Your eyes have a fixed orientation to the plane. Your eyes don't move in relation to the plane. If you recorded a video on your phone, and played it back, you would not see any change in the angle of the cabin floor. It's your vestibular system that gives you a sense of balance and spatial awareness. And it is that which tells you you're accelerating and climbing at an angle. And your vision system adjusts accordingly to keep everything in tune, which is all pretty interesting. And why we find any disconnection between the senses uncomfortable. An important part of marketing theory is creating a total experience and doing that requires that all of your customer's senses are in harmony. There are two principles to this video. Firstly, don't take everything at face value. Look for evidence beyond the obvious and superficial. Great marketers ask, how do we know? They don't get fooled by illusions. Secondly, understand how our senses work together to create a total experience. Now, this is only part of the story of how do we know. We also have to look at cognitive illusions, where our brains process data intuitively but incorrectly. And we'll look at these in part two of this video. The link for it is in the description below. And you can also subscribe or follow to get future videos or get in touch if you have any questions.